So without further ado, let's invite Roger. Hello, how are you? Hi, Roger. Hi. I'm so glad you're back with us and thank you for accepting our invitation. For over 60 years right now, and uh, for over 60 years now, ISPI and the field of performance improvement has gone through a lot. So, and you are the probably very few or the only one that who was at the very first conference of ISPI's founding conference in San Antonio, Texas. In 1962, was that true? That well, I heard that. Was that true? Well, it, it, it is true, but it was sort of by uh, coincidence. I had um, my brother was just one of the one of the founding members of ISPI, and so he decided to take a family vacation, and he said, "Do you want to go to San Antonio?" And I said, "Sure, I've never been to San Antonio." So I went with my brother on a family vacation, which happened to be the ISBI conference. So that's how I got to be at the first conference. I don't think I remember much what was going on. I do remember the hotel because I had a big swimming pool. It was called uh, the Flamingo Hotel, I think. It had a big swimming pool and it was really kind of amazing because I wasn't, I wasn't that, believe me, I wasn't that old. <laughs> <laughs> how old were you at that time? Do you still remember? I was, I was I was in high school, so I must have been, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old, something like that. I don't know. Uh, I had, I'd had to, I'd have to go back and uh, do the math. <laughs> but the Flamingo Hotel, do you know that hotel still exists today? Still in business? It, it did. Uh, I, I think it still does, because I remember we had a conference uh, in San Antonio several years ago. And I think the, that hotel was still there then, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just for our audience, um, we see some people are online. Welcome to this special session. This is an open session. This is not a presentation, uh, a single, single, single uh, way, uh, unilateral um, presentation. Um, it is an inter highly interactive session. So if you get any, any questions that you want to ask Dr. Roger Addison, please, type your, your questions in the chat area, okay? Uh, and I'll relay your questions to Roger. So before you ask any questions, and before I see any questions, I'll continue to ask my questions of curiosity, curiosity because I'm so interested in those history, Roger. I'm sorry, but I have to, uh, I have tons of questions. How many people were, were there? How's the food and how's, what, what what do you see? What else do you remember? Was you know was, no, was that in the summer? Well, in the only spring? because I know I read about it myself. But there were a few hundred people who attended that first conference in San Antonio, which you know that was pretty amazing because it had it had just started, and to get that many people there uh, was interesting. It was in San Antonio, so we certainly had. I know we had Mexican food. <laughs> Uh, but you know it was, it was regular hotel food, so it wasn't anything special that I, at least that I can remember. Although I was interesting to see, uh, it, the price of the uh, conference was only a few hundred dollars, and the stay at the hotel, you know, was like uh, only a few hundred, a few hundred dollars to stay at the hotel. So it wasn't very expensive. But that remember that was 1962. Right. Right. <clears throat> And, and uh, I think you know, the format the format was pretty much the same. You know, people uh, gave presentations. They gave presentations uh, about uh, the field that they were in. But we were at that time. It was uh, most of the people were programmed instruction because it was called NSPI right. programmed instruction. So a lot of the papers were around individual learning and uh, those types of, of of interest that people had. And, and there was a very large, there was a very large military presence also, uh, the because the the founder was actually the the first president was actually from the military. Really, was uh, yeah. what was the military branch? Was that Coast Guard? The military? I no, mean, no, 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 no. It was the Air Force. It was the Air Force? The Air Force. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it was. The president, his name was uh, Gabe Ofeich. <clears throat> Dr. Ofeich was the first uh, president of the society. Yeah, okay. So were there like con concurrent sessions? Do you remember like- Yeah, there were, one there were, yes, there were concurrent time. sessions. And, you know, pretty, I was gonna say pretty much, pretty much as it is today uh, with uh -huh. the concurrent sessions, you got keynote speakers. I can't, I'm uh -huh. sorry, I can't remember who the keynote, uh, keynote speaker was. Uh -huh. I'd have to go back and look that up. But again, uh -huh. uh, it was, the, the format has not changed drastically. Uh -huh. They didn't have, uh, but I mean, that was people were sharing their information, basically, uh -huh. in the presentations. Uh -huh. and, they, uh -huh. and they were concurrent presentations as they are, as they are today. Uh -huh. Roger, uh, let me ask you some of the questions that I uh, I collected from from some of my colleagues. In in retrospect of the past sixty years of ISPI, in your opinion, what are some of our milestones? Well, I think one of the, for me personally, one of the biggest milestones that we were uh, uh, historically we were driven by different models. So people would come in and give their presentation about their model of performance improvement. And uh, if you really looked at it, uh, the models are very, very similar across different presenters, but what they had was different names for different things. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was uh, somewhat confusing. So uh, I actually, I started working for ISPI and uh, mm -hmm. that was one of the things I wanted to clear up to see mm -hmm. that maybe we could come up with some more of a consistency in uh, the way we uh -huh. present it. So we went from model driven to the standards that we have today. And there are 10 uh -huh. standards. And Judy Hale was uh, instrumental at, of putting a group of people together to basically flesh out the standards and come up with the standards. Um, uh, I, that, and that was derived from a think tank that we had. And we invited uh, a lot of the people from uh, the, the luminaries of ISPI to come together and to see if they could agree on something <laughs> performance improvement. Mm -hmm. But they all agreed on, first of all, what they all agreed on was the RSVP uh, that they were going to there. So that was, that was the first thing that was somewhat uh, new to ISPI. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the results, the I, uh, so and the systems thinking things like that and then everybody had a systematic approach but we tried to, to codify the systematic approach that everyone had so that was the kind of the idea of the of coming up with those 10 standards and then basically over the years uh, judy hale has uh, been uh, has you know looked back at the standards she's codified the standards she's uh, done a lot of nice uh, work with the standards and ISPI now came up with a certification program around the standards. And so I just has, has grown that. I think that was a big, for me, at least that was a big, a big milestone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, which year was that, that the, uh, the RSVP appeared? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't remember. Uh, I, you know, if Judy was on, she could probably tell us exactly what year it was on, but I can't, I can't remember, but it was, you know, it was uh, in the 1980s, I, maybe it's the 90s that it was, it came about. So it came out fairly late that we had some type of, of a, an approach that was standardized from I, from an uh -huh. ISPI perspective. And, and then some of people that could agree on, uh -huh. uh, on the standards. So uh -huh. uh, there were, and then Judy, then there were, I think there were 20 chartered members of uh, the first standards. And I was one of the chartered members. And to be a chartered member meant you didn't have to take a test. <laughs> we don't have a test. We didn't have, we didn't have to go through the, the process. But it was, uh, if you had been a life member and some other things that, uh, that you were uh, had ISPI had you became a chartered member. So I was one of the twenty chartered members for uh -huh. performance improvement for the for the uh -huh. for the certification. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, Margo on, online is online, and she says uh, Gabe Offish, Air Force Colonel, uh, was a founding president. 
And uh, the 25th anniversary, when Margot Margo Murray was the president, uh, she, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the anniversary of 25th year anniversary was also in San Antonio, and Dr. Ofish was the banquet speaker. Right, yeah. Right. I, I was I, actually I was there. Margot had a commission a medallion, a, a silver medallion to give oh. out at the conference also. Uh, so some I think some people still have their I'm sure Margot still has her uh, silver medallion for the conference or for that conference to say that was the you know, sort of our 25th anniversary uh, uh, moment. Uh, when was um, the the other question was um, Roger? Well, first of all, RSVP. Um, as I, my colleagues, uh, we collected the information about RSVP. Was it it, it appeared in nineteen ninety four around nineteen ninety four to nineteen ninety six okay, yeah. that time yeah. frame. That is right. that right? It's, yeah, it, okay. it, sounds, it sounds it sounds right. Yes, it was an, about that time frame. Yes, but, yeah. and, but well, remember, before that, we didn't have everybody had their own models. And nobody had any, uh, so it was again. Every time we go to a conference, people would bring out their 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 new model or their mm -hmm. add-on to their model. Again, uh -huh. the main thing we heard it was very confusing to say whose model uh, would you choose. And when it came down uh -huh. to, when it came right down to them, uh -huh. <laughs> they were all very similar. Right, right. The reason, why they were, the reason why they were similar is that uh -huh. these people were. The people that were there, like um, uh, Gary Rumler uh, was there, and, and he and Tom Gilbert were partners at one time. So, I mean, uh -huh. just the idea of them being partners, you know, you'd see some similarity in what they were talking about. Uh, uh -huh. Although Dale Brethauer, I think, was the person who brought in more systems thinking uh, to the whole, whole, all the models that uh, he has. And again, if you want to really, uh, I think what we have now is the HPT Treasure web website that does right. a lot that does a lot of good uh, present it shows presentations. It has articles. It has over I think it's over six hundred presentations and articles on that website. So people can go to there and learn a lot about performance improvement and ISPI uh, just by logging onto that, and it's free. There's no there's no charge to it. Right. Right. I visited the web, that website. It's great, and yeah. uh, the uh, the so when we had after we had RSVP, and then that became the that became the four founding principles, the basic principles, and then we mm -hmm. have the systematic approaches, like mm -hmm. you know, identify the opportunity and all that. So mm -hmm. so it, and now it also become the standard for awards for applying RSVP awards. So. Mm -hmm. My question is, those six, how do you make a common agreement? How the field make a common agreement on those six well, systematic you, approaches? Yes. Because if everybody, everybody had their own model yeah, at that time. Well, everybody had their own, sort of their own, but everybody at least had some type of analysis. So mm -hmm. that was the first, every, everyone had some type of analysis. Then some, some most of the people had some type of, uh, of a, a development in their model. So development became uh, easily added to it. And then evaluation was certainly part of everybody's model. So there were some commonalities. Um, you know, uh, we had people who would just add, anywhere, the steps in most people's, are those looking at those that approach, most of the steps anywhere from four to 12 steps. But so here was the agreement that everybody had around the, I think the, the, the final, the final outcome that came up about that. So they, so the, again, it was an agreement that that's how uh -huh. it came. Uh -huh. So the other question I have, uh, and also a lot of people have is Roger, things has changed. I mean, time has changed and now the technology, you know, in our life is everywhere. And uh, in the future, everybody's seeing that future, I mean, is going to, I mean, dominated by technology, but dominated by robots, AI, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, my question to you, our question to you is, what technology, will technology have a huge impact to our field, to performance improvements 
if yeah. if yes, how? If not, why? Well, let me let me go back a little bit historically and use the word technology. Because if you looked yeah. at the internet, that if you look at the way originally how technology was used, it was if you go to the dictionary, it says uh, applied science. So from our standpoint, from ISBI early standpoint, the science of performance improvement was uh, there uh, starting with, you know, if you go back to B.F. Skinner, things like that, uh, the articles were there. And then the other thing too, is that there are a lot of research done with performance improvement. Um, the Dale Brethiara came out with a paper and is on that uh, HPT website. It's called Yes We Can, which is a really good uh, summary of all of the early research on performance improvement. So I, you know, I encourage people to look at that article. But that's, how, but that's how technology was thought about in the early days. It was not thought about as we think of technology today. Um, technology today, I think, is certainly what we read and uh, what we go about is that we see that there's more how we think of technology, of uh, artificial intelligence and things like that. Uh, as we go forward. So I think that would be certainly part of what we do in the future around the technology, more of the uh, computer assistant instruction, computers, things like that would be uh, uh, how we think of technology today. So it's again, it's, it's, it was a very different, a very different approach early days as, a, as it opposed to today from technology. Uh, a man by the name of uh, Paul Harmon, uh, if you go to his website, uh, called BP Trends, you'll see a lot of articles around how technology has changed in performance improvement. So that's, and that's what I, I used to write for that uh, newsletter also. So it's a matter of seeing how technology, at least that's from my perspective, how technology has influenced uh, performance improvement. So go to BP Trends, uh, Paul Harriman's approach, and you'll see how technology has uh, looked at. And he, and he was one of the original founders of um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence and things like that. He, he's got several books on that as well. And you'll see very much uh, the approach of performance improvement in his, in his thinking and his articles. And by the way, he also worked for Gary Rumler and, and uh, Tom Gilbert. So, I mean, all these people are connected in some way. Uh -huh. Um. We have so many important figures in the development of a society in our, in our, in our, in our field. And some of the very notable names, rather, uh, like Tom Gilbert, like, um, like, like you know, uh, Gil Ramler, uh, like Dale Brethauer. Oh, gosh, there are so many of them. So can you name a few and tell us mm -hmm. what their biggest contributions? Because this video is going to be you know, recorded for a long, long time. And the new new members are gonna look, also look at this one. So okay. as a person I, has yeah. been, let me, you know, let me visiting share. the developing of the society. I'm gonna, share a, I'm gonna share a screen with you. Yeah, uh, please. That um, I hope, I thought I could. I can't see it, uh, I can't, I can't, I don't see it. It went away. <laughs> I don't know where it went. So I'll try to remember the names. So I, I, sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir. Okay. F let's go back. Yeah, let's go back. I was going to say, let's go back in history that I can remember. And I hope I don't remember. I hope I don't forget people's names as it goes along. But do, certainly. Do, do, do you want to give it another try to share your screen with us? I, I, uh, I better I, share something. Yeah, let me. I don't, yeah, I don't know where it went. So let's just, let's just, let me, let me, let me go with my okay. memory. And if, if Margo's on there too, maybe Margo can uh, jog my memory as well. But if you go back historically, uh, you know, for, at least from my perspective, is that uh, a man by the name of B.F. Skinner was one of the founding members of performance improvement. He didn't call it that, 
but B.L. Skinner was, uh, a lot of people came from that era of uh, programmed instruction. So he had a major impact on the way people thought about programmed instruction. And then there were people who actually uh, studied under him. And the person I studied under with and I worked for was a man by the name of uh, Lloyd Homme. And Lloyd Homme, if you read early papers, he was uh, came around about calling it, uh, talked about contingency management and the PREMAC principle. So that was his contribution to uh, our society. And PREMAC, and those were all uh, built around reinforcement uh, concepts, uh, reinforcing events. Uh, actually, one of my first papers I uh, wrote with was with, co authored with Lloyd Homme called A Reinforcing Event Menu. And that was in the early 60s that I came up with that, or we came up with that. Uh, Don Toasty also worked with uh, Lloyd Homme, and you'll read a lot. If you go to the uh, HPT uh, treasure site, you'll see a lot of articles around, around with Don Toasty. And Don was, his contribution again was in contingency management and motivation. So you'll see a lot of articles around motivation and uh, ideas like that came about. Um, uh, another person that I didn't I remember, remember was uh, Dr. Jim Evans. Uh, and Jim Evans was uh, had a lot of work in programmed instruction and came up with the principles around programmed instruction. So those were some of the early people, at least that I, I worked with. The, uh, uh, the other ones that certainly came about at that, about that same time, I mean, this is not, I'm not trying to give chronological order. At that same time, uh, Gary Rumler was working on, uh, in Michigan, on programmed and with, with individualized instruction, but came up with some of the original ideas around performance improvement. So his workshops were a lot uh, around ideas of what performance is about. And he uh, had been working with Dale Brethauer at that time on the workshops. Uh, and uh, Tom Gilbert was working with him. But so, I mean, all those people were working together on looking at how performance improvement, again, they didn't call it that, but that's how they looked at performance improvement from that standpoint. So basically you would start seeing some people standardizing what or looking at from the standpoint of looking what performance improvement was all about. Um, Joe Harless uh, was also, again, uh, Joe Harless was also one of the people that uh, gave our contribution. Front-end analysis, he coined the word front-end analysis. Uh, so he was certainly instrumental, and he also worked with Tom Gilbert. So, so you can kind of start seeing the connections here with Tom Gilbert. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, Tom Gilbert was very good friends with Lloyd Homme. So again, it, 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 all these people knew each other and were sharing ideas informally. People actually, people always kid about going to an ISBI conference, and it, we certainly went to uh, the, the sessions. But everybody said where you learned everything was not at the sessions where you weren't, when you went to the bar after the, after the program was over, everybody would go to the bar and they would share ideas and concepts there. So that was the, the whole area around um, sharing ideas. And that's how actually, what was interesting, uh, ISPI used to have a thing called the Cracker Barrel. Yeah. They call it yep. things, they call it different now, but it was a way for people to share information. And the first ones were actually in the hallways. Yeah, um, yeah, and 99 second presentation. Right, it was? 99 second presentation, yeah. Right. Yeah, so I mean, that had become popular. And I get ISBI has now called it different things over the years. But again, right. uh, that was. Uh, the other person who was very instrumental in, in changing some of the, our thinking was uh, Margo, Margo Murray. And Margo uh, introduced us to the work, work of mentoring. And she's great on that in that area of mentoring. And, she, and she, again, she uses the performance improvement approach. Um, mm -hmm. Margot uh, has given us a lot of, of international, she's done a lot of work internationally and applied to her the science of performance improvement internationally. Um, the, um, I, I had to look at my bookshelf, all the different people that I have on my bookshelf. I have, I have it overhead, all the people uh, that influenced performance improvement, certainly, uh, Another person I, I'm looking at her book right now is um, uh, Judy Hale. I mean, Judy Hale uh, certainly has given us a lot of information around performance improvement, around uh, evaluation and, and certification. She, uh, 
and that's the contribution that I can remember that she gave us. Um, the, uh, another person who I can, I'm looking at uh, books are um, First Things Fast. And I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to go up and get a couple of these. Go ahead. First Things Fast. I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me, let me turn off my background. Sure. Well, I thought I got turned off. Just anyway. so you know that uh, Cracker anyway. Barrel, we, uh, we still Let's have go. First that Cracker Barrel. Oh, Sorry? Go ahead. It was called First Things Fast. It was by Allison Rossett. And Allison, uh, with San Diego, Sta San Diego State University, uh, came up with right. a really nice, easy, easy read around performance improvement uh, that gave us some good ideas. First Things Fast. I, I like that book. It's, it's again, perform she, uh, had the handbook for performance analysis, she called it. Uh, she was one of the, I mean, she still writes and still uh, is with us. If you go on Facebook, you'll see. Uh, her, she, you can follow her on Facebook right now. Um, another one, uh, let me uh, certainly my one of my favorite books, uh, which I always keep right next to me, was Serious Performance Consulting by um, Gary, Gary Rumler. And I encourage people who want a step by step approach, performance improvement, and I get Gary Rumler's book on Serious Performance Consulting. Uh, I encourage you to, to, to do that. Um, which is, you know, a, a certainly a uh, has made a change in my life as we go forward. Let me go. I have some other one. Oh, another one is don't forget uh, human competence uh, by Tom Gilbert. Yeah. Uh, make sure you, make sure you put that on your website or on, on your mm -hmm. website on your in your library. Um, uh, I'm not going to The other one I have his whole series, I'm just looking at, is Bob Mager. Bob Mager's, uh -huh. six, Bob Mager's six pack probably was an important contribution to the field. So I would add uh, the, the, the six pack uh, as to your, to your library. Um, uh -huh. Those, you know, those are the people I can remember off the top. I mean, there's certainly a lot more I'm forgetting, but I'm certainly a lot more. Again, I, again, I go back to go to the uh, to the HPT uh, uh, treasure site, and you'll see most of these people listed with their articles. And uh -huh. I think it's very helpful. At least it's helpful for me to go back and look at that. Not only that, uh, Guy Walsh has done a great job of interviews, so you'll see lots of interviews, lots of historical pieces from a performance improvement across across the board. So uh, go see, go, go to that website and you'll be amazed. I, at least I'm always amazed what's on there. Right, right, it's a great website. And uh, our operator, Jennifer Romer has already put the link in the chat area for everybody. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, we got a, quite a few comments and questions here, um, Roger. And uh, there, there's quite, so, um, one of the question is uh, how and where your books are published and distributed. Uh, say it again. How and where your are your books published and distributed? Well, I was going to say, uh, I don't know if they're in. I don't, I don't know if they're in print anymore. So I, they were. You can't. You could get them on the uh, uh, Amazon website at one time, but I don't know if that's still available or not. Uh, the uh, I know. I think it's still. Available in Chinese in China, so I think there's uh, that that book is there. So I mean, if you can read Chinese, you can go to China and get a copy of the book. So I mean, that's the you know, unfortunately, um, publishers stop printing books. Uh, they stop printing books anyway. That's that's the problem with my book. And um, also, um, any basic advice for new ISPI members? Uh, my basic, well, I would say if you have a, 
a, a chapter in your area, get involved in your chapter, performance improvement or ISPI chapter in your area. That's always a good way to get started. Uh, if you can uh, attend uh, online uh, sessions, uh, and there are, there are lots of them now, online sessions about performance improvement, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, again, I would encourage you to go to, uh, take the website that was just posted, uh, do that. So I get to get started. Uh, I had my, my, the way I got started in it, I was well, in this a sort of a backwards way, is uh, when I was in this and out, I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, they were looking for people to test program instruction. And I was, again, I was still in high school at that time. And so I said, uh, so they, I said, well, I can get a job after school and make you make 50 cents an hour testing programmed instruction. So I, that's how I was introduced to uh, all this. And I said, well, maybe I can get a, maybe they'll give me another job. And so I, I worked, started working in their learning lab. And then I just progressed in that whole, whole area about just getting jobs around uh, teaching machines and performance improvement. Again, it wasn't called performance improvement. Uh, I did some work for Westinghouse Learning Corporation for, with the Job Corps uh, and then Upward Bound. That basically paid for my education, uh, those programs. Uh, I didn't go, I didn't, I, I went to work before I got my formal degree. <laughs> the reason why, the reason I went back to school, get my formal degree, I asked um, uh, the people that I was working for at Westinghouse Learning Corporation, how come I didn't get paid as much as everybody else? And they said, well, you don't have a degree. And I said, I mean, that's the difference. I'm doing the same work, but I don't have a degree. <laughs> so, so I said, well, I can fix that. So I basically got a pretty good job, went to school and started working on my undergraduate work in psychology. And then I went, and then luckily, I went to work for a man by the name of Lou Bright, Dr. Lou Bright in uh, Waco, Texas at Baylor University. And uh, he hired me right out of college. I was at Baylor, I started getting, I started taking courses at Baylor University. I got my master's and doctorate uh, there at the same time. So I was, luckily I just sort of fell into all these right time, right place, and I was there and then meeting some of these great people along the way. Um, the other thing too, uh, that, that uh, you know, Gary, I mentioned Gary Rummler, uh, you know, and it changed, I, did, I took his workshop and uh, met him there at the workshops. I, I know him before that at ISBI, but when I first got to know him, I went to workshops. And then when we came up with the institutes, performance improvement institutes, he was one of the instructors of the first performance institutes. Or, or the design of it. And so that was where I really became a lot closer to Geary. And then the other thing about the institutes, we, what we had decided is that we want people to teach in the institutes that, uh, were, uh, that were probably well known. So we, we got together a faculty of, of people who had models and people who had ideas about performance improvement. And Harold Stolovich, Again, I, met, I should have mentioned Harold Stolovich because his work is seminal around, uh, you know, again, get his book. If you don't have his books, get his book on uh, uh, performance, and, performance and training. I mean, those are all great, great books to have on your, on your shelf as well. Uh, again, I mentioned Margot Murray's book. Don't forget to get hers on, on mentoring. Uh, that's a good, a good addition to your, to your, uh, web, to your web, to your, not websites, but also to your, uh, uh, book bookshelf. I'm just looking around. I got I got so many books around me that I often forget. So I just go to I go look around. It's like oh let me go. Oh <laughs> the other thing let me. I just I'm looking up. Uh, I'm looking up, and I see the handbooks of performance improvement. And uh, I mentioned Harold Stolovich. Harold Stolovich was the editors to the handbooks, and those are a great resource. To right. Right. So, I mean, if you can still get a hold of the handbooks, I would encourage you to do that. And Erika keeps his wife, and they're well, Eric, the husband, yeah. husband, and they were both yeah. editors. <laughs> Erica, Erica, and Harold have done great work on and basically giving us nice models around performance improvement and how we think about it. I remember that was a 1996 edition 
was the first one. It came yeah. out in 1996, I, I believe. I'm not looking at that. I think, yes, that was. And I, I, again, I, uh, luckily, luckily enough that Carol Haig and I had several articles uh, published in the, the handbooks as well. Another person who comes in mind, who came on much later, but um, uh, Lynn, Lynn Kearney. Uh, I worked with Lynn Kearney a long time when she, I mean, she was able to take her uh, drawings and make it really easy for us to understand what performance was improvement was about. Again, go back on the ISPI website and download her performance improvement, what, what that's about. So, I mean, she's great on that. I, I worked with her a long time when I was working for, the, I worked for a financial organization. So, uh, here's, a, here's an interesting story, I think. I think it's interesting. Uh, uh, Lynn and I were asked to do the performance improvement workshop. Uh, we went to Spain to do it. And uh, and basically, I was doing. We were doing the presentation together, and she what she would do is, as I was talking, she would be behind me on the big wall murals, and she was basically annotating the performance improvement process or the workshop, and she drew all these uh, details. And there again, I st I still have all these. Uh, pictures, performance improvement. And a lot of people were saying, well, how come you think we're kindergarten, we had to have pictures? But but it was so clear at the end of the at the end of the three days that people just basically loved the ideas that Lynn was bringing these drawings about what performance improvement was all about. So it was adding the pictures to our words. Uh, and again, I think Gary Rummers also says, if you can't draw it, you can't understand it. So that was so that was another uh, approach. Again, so if you have an uh, opportunity to see any of the work that uh, Lynn Kearney has done or Carol Haig has done, um, they were the co-authors on the book we did too, together. And so uh, that was I've, I've had a long relationship with those those people as well. Um, those are the you know that's the ones I can think of. Uh, it, I mean, my my books are a lot. My walls are lined with books around performance improvement. And I got some things that people don't even have anymore that are that uh, are out of print. Yeah, the pictures save south and words and Lynn's work is pretty impressive. Right. It was, again, uh, when I worked for the financial organization, it was, I would bring her in and we would do uh, uh, planning. And we, so I have the senior executives talk about the planning and she would draw their words. And they're always just amazed at the difference between what the pictures look like as opposed to their words. It, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty phenomenal her approach. So again, that was one, one thing that I can remember that changed uh, the way I, I thought about performance improvement. And again, again, go to the web, ISPI website and you'll actually can download uh, some of her artwork around what performance improvement is. Right. Thank you. There are some comments. Um, um, Margot says, um, home, H-O-M-M-E, toasty, uh, toasty, right. even, at all, and um, the world resources for her publications on feedback and coaching. So I guess home is also another yeah. great name. Hami. Yeah, Hami. Lloyd Hami. Lloyd Hami is the person. Yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd Hami, Hami is the right, person. Right. He's the person I worked under uh, at uh, Westinghouse Learning Corporation and Teaching Machines Incorporated. And Lloyd uh, also studied under B.F. Skinner. So that's how the connection, that's how those connections are made uh, as, we, as we look at. And Don Toasty worked closely with Lloyd Hami on what we call contingency management. Right, right. You mentioned his name first. I thought yeah. it's a different person. No, Sorry Lloyd no, same, same, per uh, same person, Lloyd Hami. And the Don Toasty uh, were mm -hmm. around. So, um, looking back, Roger, in the past sixty years since nineteen sixty two, a lot of change. Now it's twenty twenty two. ISPI, what what do you think were the biggest challenges that ISPI as an organization has ever encountered? And how do they come over with it? 
Well, I, I think the challenges that I've seen in the past several years is that uh, and, 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 and the performance improvement field as a whole, you know, right. both. I think that the challenges I've seen is that um, that we we still rely too much on the individual performers uh, thinking thinking. Uh, when I think that we, we should be more systems oriented thinking. That just that's my opinion at least. Because uh, if you look at a lot of the papers, we're still learning. Again, I, I'm not I'm not opposed to the learning. Uh, as one of the interventions, but it's only one of the one of the strategies, one of the interventions. But we seem to go always go back and load ourselves down with with the whole idea about performance improvement being from a learning standpoint. And I think it's from the standpoint as that that's one one. Uh, uh, and actually, if you look at the data, it's one of the least effective way of we looking at it. People always think there's something wrong with the people. And there's usually something that's not wrong with the people, there's something wrong with the systems. So I think we should be more focused on looking at the systems and how we can fix, fix the systems as opposed to the individual. Uh, Klaus Wittgen is, has done some great articles uh, from Germany, uh, some great articles around performance improvement from a systems thinking. So I encourage you to look at uh, Klaus's articles. And, and uh, unfortunately he doesn't have, a, he has a book out, but it's in German. Most of us can't read his book, but I think he's some somebody that I certainly look look to today, um, look at performance improvement, how we think about it in, in today's society. Got a bunch of questions and comments in. Yeah, and, let, me, uh, let me before I, let me go before I go further. Yep. A, another person, Roger Kaufman. Uh, oh you know, yeah. Yeah. And Roger Kaufman introduced us to thinking more globally. And I think his his work, from the standpoint of of adding value to society, so societal value. And if you look at uh, the, the we'll call the four W's today, you know the last W is world, but that's his part of what he thinks about from the standpoint of mega. So the, he added that to our thinking, which was I, again another way. And then I go back to Margo. Margo had been working on that for years around the thinking about how we apply this from a world standpoint. The other thing, to, but I don't want to, I also, I want you to remember there is a great conference online every year. Well, it's on, online now. We used to do it face-to-face. -face. It's, uh, it's, it's the EMEA conference. It's ISBI EMEA, which is Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, I encourage you because you get a different perspective when you start going to EMEA conferences because you get a more of, a, of international European conference perspective. So I encourage you to, to look at the EMEA conference as well. I mean, I, I know I, it's just, I'm free floating thinking as they come to me. So, then, but again, look at EMEA, ISBI EMEA. And Carol, Carol Panza was the one who basically is the, is the, she didn't start it, but she's the backbone right now of performance improvement from the EMEA standpoint. Right, right. And a uh, question from Elizabeth. Uh, my question is maybe more of a statement than wondering what you observe, you, your, your observation is. It seems that ISPI is very focused on L&D and the larger capital P of a performance is not explored. What's your take on that? Well, that's what I, I, I know. That's, again, I'm not, I'm not bashing learning and development, but I think that, that that certainly is not our, I mean, that's one of the solutions. And I think our focus has gone too much to the L&D side and not focused enough on the, uh, the RSVP side. Uh, so, so you know, if, 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 our, if our thinking is around the standards, then uh, you know, really, the, I don't see any, I don't see any part of the standards to talk about L and D. Am I wrong? I mean, it's that's. You know, tell me where the, tell me, tell me where the standards. Are. Now, again, if you do your analysis and you come up with people need uh, skills and knowledge, then certainly L and D brings us what we need to be, but there's a lot of other things that get in the way of people performing. And it's usually in the environment or in the system someplace. Again, Gary Rummer 
that you put a good person in a bad system, the system wins every time. And um, uh, Deming said the same thing. I mean, they're, they're all, these people are always talking about it's the system that gets in our way, not the, the people. Right, right. I remember that, I, I don't know if we put it correctly or not, the Texas shooter story, like <laughs> you shoot and then you, you draw a circle somewhere around it, you, you draw the target around the bullet. Right, yeah, right. It's, it's really the It's like, if you think L and D first, then that's where it's going to lead you. It's going to lead you to the um, the solution of being a learning and development approach. But so we talk about in in your analysis, you got to be solution neutral. And solution neutral means that if you if you think of a solution first, guess where you think? Guess where you lead to? Your bias around learning and development. So again, I just, it's really, it's not an easy thing to do, but I think it's an important thing to consider. Yeah. Here, my, my, Roger, my experience is that uh, when I talk to people like learning and development managers, they want to upgrade themselves to performance consultants. First thing I, I tell them is to forget about training. Dump <laughs> it. Forget about it. Just kill it. There's no training department, you know, corporate university, get rid of it. Hmm. Get rid of it. Yeah. You're not the person who is going to receive salary every month right. in China every month in, in the United States bi weekly. But you're the one who give out the salary every month. Put, right. put yourself in your boss's position, right. thinking his mind for, for, for two days. Yeah, I, I remember when I worked the problem. I like I said, I worked for a large financial organization. And uh, this, the story I often tell is that, you know, how did, I, how did I get to work for that group? And again, I got, it was through ISBI. And one of the things that they said is that the, one of the senior executives went to their human resource department and said, you know, we're not getting any value out of our training department. So I think that they need to go to the field and learn how we, what we do. And then, they, and then he asked another question, which was great for me. He says, is there anything else we, we should be looking at? And luckily that the person who's working for the bank, she said, yes, uh, and she was a member of ISBI. She says, performance improvement or, H, or HPT as she called it, performance improvement. And he said, well, let's, let's see what that's all about. So she hired four consultants. Uh, myself was one of them and Carol Haig was another one. So that's how I met Carol. And we basically set up a department and it wasn't a training department, it was a, a, a performance improvement department with the bank. And that was another way I just sort of fell into uh, an organization. We, then, we, then eventually I took over the department uh, performance improvement department, and then we worked there for 17 years. And not that not that we didn't do training. You know, when the skills and knowledge was needed, we had training go along with it. But we did so many other things about uh, working in the environment and coming up with ideas of how to uh, work in the environment was was a, was a great great learning place for me, uh, pr uh, practicing performance improvement in an organization. Again, it was I loved it. It was great uh, for 17 years. I did that. Yeah, I well, always say the uh, training department is a department that, why they call the training department? Because this department needs training most. <laughs> well, you know, it was, it, it was interesting. Once, once the people sort of, once the trainers went out to the field and they had a better reputation because they started learning how, what people actually do. Uh, and the other thing too, is that when we worked at the financial organization, uh, the people who are actually the trainers were the senior managers. And so it was a lot different. We were developing uh, things for them to present, it became presentations basically, for them to present around performance, around performance. Around. And then again, I had several senior managers became very, very, were, were champions for me around performance improvement in the organization, which was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the higher the, the the higher the systematic view is, and then the better the solution you will get. In my uh, workshops, I tell my uh, students, uh, forget about training needs analysis. Training needs analysis is wrong. <laughs> right. 
because well, you have to go back right. to business gap analysis. TNA should be returned to what it was. Business right. gap analysis is now training needs analysis because you're starting from yeah. where you're going to end. Well, I agree. I, I, training needs analysis was always strange to me because it always became up what training do we want to offer? So right. it was a list, a list of courses that we want to offer as opposed to uh, what pe people are required to do. So right. one of the first things that, well, it took me a while, but uh, they used to have training catalogs of uh, what, what people could sign up for. And one of the things yeah. I did after I worked there for a while, I got rid of the training catalog because I thought it was, why, why are we building stuff that people don't need? <laughs> the finger huts. The finger yeah. huts of the old days. Right, right, catalog right. shopping. <laughs> Anyway, Roger, we're getting close to uh, to the end of our session, but I've still got a lot of questions to you. Uh, one of the questions mm -hmm. is, um, in retrospect of the past, your career, your long career, your career with ISPI, being the leadership, being a, a contributor in the in the field, and uh, uh, very well known consultant, great mentor, great coach, uh, great colleague and companion, great master, after all. If you had another chance to start it all over again, to do it all over again, what would you do? What would have? What would you have done differently? You know, one of the things that when I started, there were no courses that you could take. You you you, you took psychology courses, but there are really no courses in performance improvement. And uh, Boise State has offered a nice curriculum. Uh, and there's and, and Allison Ross had a nice curriculum around. She added performance improvement to her curriculum. So I mean, it was it's nice to see that you could get an education today around performance improvement. So I, I, if if I was going to change, it'd be nice to it'd be nice to have some courses. But at the same time, I had some of the best instructors in the world around that performance improvement. And then I also think that ISPI, the annual conference where you can go learn about these models and what people were doing was a great value to me, at least uh, at least once a year, you could get sort of energized around performance improvement. And so I don't know if I'd change, I, again, I don't know if I'd change anything because I had such a good, un unusual approach. But if, if you're going in it today, I would say, go look for an, a good program around performance improvement. And I think like some like, place like Boise State or Michigan, I mean, there's there, there are a lot of places that uh, there Texas, I think Northern Texas, I think uh, is a great program. So I mean, you can find places to study with great people around performance improvement. Uh, and then there's also as you can go online and see all the great workshops and things you and, and at no cost. Uh, Carl Binder, for example, I think every month has something around performance improvement using what he calls as the six boxes. So I mean. I, and don't, again, he doesn't charge anything for these. I mean, he charges for his his programs to go away, but and yeah, I think you online take him as courses. But these monthly uh, programs, I think, are just a, a amazing things you can you can learn about around performance. So again, there's so much out there that again, that, that at no cost that you can learn about what we do and add to your toolkit. I think it's just uh, amazing. And then remember when I started, there were no books even. Uh, you know, so there's lots, there's lots, there's lots of resources out there now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What what advice would you give to the younger generation who started to, to step into this field? <laughs> find a, find a mentor that can help you through learning about performance improvement. And there are a lot of people out there who, who like to be ment who, who, who like to be mentors. I, again, I don't, I mean, I had some great mentors along the way that I could ask about some of the issues that I was having. So if you can find a mentor in performance improvement, I think that's very, very helpful. Uh, and again, I've offered my mentoring, I've offered people over the years, I would love to answer their questions in more detail, one-to-one. -one. Uh, so um, uh, I think that's the, the one piece I can advise. And then certainly take courses, not look for these, you know, these um, th things that don't cost you anything. Uh, read, read, read the articles. 
Um, but go to Serious Performance Consulting by Gary Rumler. <laughs> so, so, so I mean, his his books are great. So there's a lot. I think Gigi, you can do to add to your bookshelf. That's that's very very helpful. Great, thank you, thank you, Roger. Um, Unfortunately, time is uh, getting getting to getting very close to the bottom of the hour. We've got a few minutes, but I want to thank people online who participated in today's se open session. Uh, we got so many uh, people here. We got, uh, of course, our own Margo, um, Margo Murray, and uh, Dave. And also Elizabeth and Halifo and uh, WH, um, well, Elizabeth and uh, uh, WHP and Education. I believe that's George, if I remember uh, correctly. Uh, so a lot of people contributed and made a lot of comments, but I, I'm going to save all these comments and then send it over to you. I, I, I cannot have all the time to read all the comments, but some of the comments are really great. And a great reminder and uh, and uh, great additional information to the point that you have talked, you have covered, Roger. Thank you so much. And also, just to let you know, the Cooker Barrel is still on with ISBS annual conference, and uh, we had it uh, this year's conference in uh, in April, back in end of April, uh, back in Nashville. Nashville conference we still have, uh, so never stop. I'll tell you a, a trivia question. You know why the ISBS conference is in April? Oh, please. I always wondered. <laughs> the reason why is because it was around Easter time. Uh, and, okay. and you can get cheaper rates at hotels around that time of the year. So that's why it was in April. <laughs> okay. And there are some other organizations. Uh, they're also end of April and beginning right. of May. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. right. Kind of I, think, yeah. I think it was based upon you can get cheaper rates at hotels. <laughs> really? Yeah. And it still is. It's, and it still is, right? It still is, yes. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for participating. That brings us uh, to the end of today's session. Uh, we thank Roger again for his unselfish contribution again to ISBI. Uh, to this little work program called ISBI Live. And, uh, and I want to take this opportunity to make an, an, an announcement. The announcement is a launch of a website. It's called ISBI.live. Yes, ISBI Live is now ISBI.live. is is a branch of ISBI.org's website. And you can come and visit us. Our great web team did a great job on that. And Wish you will have fun with it. Thank you all for watching and participating. You can always come back. If you're happy with the session, as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Very important notice is uh, ISPI 2023 annual conference will be held at Woodlands Hotel, Woodlands Hotel in Williamsburg, Virginia from April 23rd. 27th next year. Save the date, April 23rd to 27th. ISPI Live is a weekly program every Saturday at noon U.S. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have not joined ISPI yet, you are welcome to visit our website at ispi.org and ispi.live. Next two to three, two to three weeks, we're gonna take a break. We wish everyone, everybody in the US and around the world a very happy holiday. So we'll <laughs> come back after the new year. Again, we thank Rogers Sharing and our own very Jennifer Romer from ISBI's web team as operator on the background. This is George Gu posting live for you from Shanghai, 